Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya has clarified that the government has not banned the importation of maize from the neighboring Uganda and Tanzania, as earlier reported. According to the CS, Kenya only blocked maize from the two East African countries that did not meet the sanitary and phytosanitary standards. He added that importers will be allowed to bring in maize consignments from the two countries once they comply with the required safety standards, assuring that Kenyans should not be worried as the situation will not affect the flower market. The decision to stop maize imports from Uganda and Tanzania followed surveillance and testing of maize that revealed high levels of aflatoxin and safe for consumption. We have not stopped the importation of maize from Uganda or Tanzania. What we have done and what the authorities have has done is uh, check the, the quality of, of, of the maize. And, and actually, the, if, if they release to you document, they will, you will see six months ago there was that warning uh, that the, the maize is, 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 is not safe. And that information was uh, taken, communicated to them. So, so it's not like it's a sudden decision. It is just a compliant uh, decision. So uh, once there is compliant, they are, the missiles continue flowing. So we don't think there will be an, an impact uh, as big as the one you are envisioning because we are only enforcing standards. So if somebody dries the mist, aflatoxin levels goes down, they'll be able to bring, uh, continue with the trade. The government will require at least 3 billion shillings to revive the cotton and pyrethrum subsectors, according to a new report on the revitalization and revival of cotton and pyrethrum. According to the report, cotton will require investments of about 1.9 billion shillings, while pyrethrum will require 1.1 billion shillings. And as Vicente Odiambo reports, the government has pledged to enforce a law that requires the packaging of potatoes to be in bags, not exceeding 50 kilograms. The government is making a fresh attempt to revive Kenya's cotton and pyrethrum subsectors. Kenya, which was the global leading exporters of pyrethrum in the 1970s, has seen the sector crumble on the back of mismanagement and corruption in the 1990s. According to the National Steering Committee on the Revitalization and Revival of Cotton and Pyrethrum Subsectors, the government will require at least 3 billion Kenyan shillings to revitalize the two agro subsectors. We are talking of, I think for cotton, we are talking of about 1.9 billion shillings, pyrethrum 1.1 billion shillings. And then we get a team that can make sure that every one of those shillings gets into the process of reviving the crops. To further push the revival agenda, the government will also need to update regulations and management systems in order for the crops to be able to fairly compete in the liberalized global market. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya has said the country's overdependence on the importation of cotton was long overdue. We can't continue relying on importing cotton for and from our neighbors. Uh, when we have a lot of arable land that is idle, that is not being utilized for production. So even as we expand our industries and even as we absorb whatever cotton we can get from elsewhere, we still have to make sure that we also become a major grower of both cotton and pyrethrum. In an effort to revive cotton, in November last year, after successful trials, the government authorized the cultivation of genetically modified Bt cotton whose seeds are able to resist the African bollworm. Meanwhile, Irish potato farmers around the country have arisen to smile following the government's pledge to enforce regulations that make it illegal to package potato in bags exceeding 50 kilograms that were unsuccessfully challenged in court by a section of traders. Munya now wants the law enforcement agencies and regulators at both national and county levels to ensure the law is observed. These regulations are good for the industry, they are good for our farmers, they are also good for our traders. They are intended to bring fairness in the value chain so that we make sure that uh, there is nobody exploited, there is no player in the value chain that is exploited. The agriculture CS further kept up his war on individuals and entities he termed as illegal cartels and profiteers who have exploited farmers. 
warning that more crops like tea might go down if immediate action is not taken. You take over a sector, you have just been given a mandate by the farmers to manage a sector for them. Then once you have been given by the mandate, the farmers don't matter anymore. You move on doing many other things that have nothing to do with the core mission that you are given by the farm. In the meantime, all eyes are set to turn to the Ministry of Agriculture as it takes one more push to revive the cotton and pyrethrum subsectors. For Metropole TV, I'm Vincent Viambo.